All right, what is up everybody? Hope you are all doing all right. Today I'm gonna show you a thing that I promised I would do like a long time ago. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through how I set up the shield throw, the bouncing shield in, in uh, the project showcase that I did a while ago. I got my coffee and everything is good. And this is the fourth time I'm trying to make this video because I wanted to remake it from scratch but I just kept failing every time I wanted to remake it. So I figured it's easier if I just show you how I did it. Uh, but first it was like, I made it from scratch and uh, it wasn't working. Then I used the uh, Soulsborn, or I got it to work, but it was just a shitty tutorial. And then I'm, I tried to implement it in the Soulsborn uh, series, but I couldn't find any good animations. And I tried to, to experiment with the root motion and ended up destroying the animation for the skeleton for some reason, so all the animations in that project stopped working, so that's why you need to back your stuff up, which I didn't do in that one, so we'll see we'll see if I get that one to work. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna show you show you uh, what it's all about. Ooh, I forgot the controls to this one. So we have the shield throw. There. You can see me sh throwing the shield. And if it hits, it's gonna bounce between two targets. I'm not sure if there's audio. Maybe it's going to be super loud gaming audio in the background here. Yeah, so within a certain dis distance, it's gonna bounce, and if I throw it straight out and nothing, it's just gonna return back to me. So that's what. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is you need a throw animation that actually works. So. Obviously, I have this one. It's just a shield throw animation. And what you need is you need a animation notifier. Um, my, mine is called skill shield throw. So you can see you want it at the point where the shield is being thrown. So probably X. Yeah, that's a pretty good point I got there. So that's where the shield is thrown. So what we're gonna do or how this works is at this point we're gonna replace the shield that we are having in the hand which is this shield we're gonna replace it with a projectile and hopefully you got a projectile if you don't got a projectile doesn't matter we can do a new one so uh, let me just go into my player character and see where I have I somehow res also I resetted the layout so I never I don't have the same stuff anymore. I want this to be here all the time. Uh, shield throw. So what we have is we have this event shield throw, uh, and I could also call it from the E button, but I'm I'm not doing that for some reason. Let's do E then. So first E, then you create a custom event called shield throw. But you, you, you actually don't want to do this, because this is just for testing purposes. Uh, so, let's see if I can create the one sheets. So, what you want to do is you want to do server play montage. Uh, and you want to play the shield throw. Skill shield throw. There we go. So you can see that I'm doing the. So what we're doing here is we're creating a projectile, as I said. And if we're having, if we have a shield in our hand, we set the visibility of the shield in the hand to zero to hidden, and then we, yeah, the line traces here are for my climbing system. So that's where you know that I use uh, E for the same key here. Um, so what do we want to do? When we get to this skill shield throw, we want to spawn the projectile. Uh, so you also need to obviously call. Uh, you need to call it from your animation blueprint. So we have this, anim notify skill shield throw. It's that one. And what we do is when we reach that notifier, we get a reference to our owning player, which you hopefully have from before. I'm, I'm getting it on the event begin play. Here 
here's my how I got the reference. If I get pawn honor, cast to third person character, you obviously cast to your character and then you set it. And then we call this event shield throw. So it's this one. Hope you're following. So what do we want to do? Now we want to spawn actor from class. The actor from we're spawning is the master projectile. And this function is just server spawn actor from class. Uh, so we spawn actor. The spawned actor is, uh, yeah, spawn projectile. You could call it or whatever. We cast to the projectile, and yeah. So this is a homing projectile. You could have different types of projectiles or whatever, whatever. And then inside my projectile actor, I have a variable called uh, owning player. So you want to set that variable to your player character. So now to the real logic. This is the complicated part. Ah, I'm getting a headache just from looking at this. So what's the projectile set up with? Uh, the projectile itself is a static mesh, which is going to be representing the shield. We got a collision called damage collision, and we got a collision called bounce collision. So the bounce collision is how far... Uh, so it will bounce to enemies inside this collision if it hasn't already bounced. So if we set it to something huge, it's going to... You see, it's going to bounce plenty. So yeah. We don't want that. We want it a bit smaller. You do you, you do however you want to. Um, and we got, what else do we have? Uh, just some particles to make it look nice. So this is just, just a, I think it's from the Infinity Blades pack. Yeah, Infinity Blades, so it's a free particle works like a charm and I got some kind of trail from some other pack I'm not sure you can see it's a trail I guess yeah it's like windy trails afterwards after it so you can see you can see that it gets like it gets on looks speedy uh, and then obviously the hero of this actor is the projectile movement Initial speed 2000, max speed 2000, you set it to whatever you want to. You can use acceleration if you want to. Uh, I disabled gravity so it doesn't go down, it just goes straight forward. And make sure it's a homing projectile. You could do that as a variable as well if you want to, but this is my homing projectile actor. So start with, uh, no, is projectile homing? Yes. Acceleration, no idea just put it to a high number. I think that's the default. Um, and that's the setup of the actor. Uh, we also got a few variables. You can't see them because of my face. There we go. Enemies to hit, which is a array of master enemies. So whenever something overlaps this collision we cast to so on begin overlap from the bounce collision we cast to our enemy uh, we have a variable called return which is used to decide if it's on the way back if the projectile is on the way back we're not gonna keep bouncing with more stuff and we're not gonna uh, cause damage to more things on the way unless you want to I'm, I'm, I, when my projectile returns it's just gonna return so that's the check you can add it if you want to uh, if we cast the master AI and we manage and the already damaged enemies which means we haven't damaged this uh, AI so you need to add that variable as well it's also it's the same enemies to hit and already damaged enemies are the same type of variable both both are arrays of master AI and 
So before we actually add it to enemies to hit, we're gonna check if it's already damaged. If it's not already damaged, we can add it to enemies to hit. Perfect. Uh, and yeah. If it overlaps something, it's yeah. On the way back, if it overlaps the player character, we're just gonna do the return sound, the catch sound. So that's basically what this is. I'm not sure if you can hear it. That's my catch sound that I have at this point. Just a placeholder. Um, yeah. So that's it. And then we have the damage collision. So this is how we apply damage. You've probably seen this before. So if the damage collision overlaps a master AI, we are gonna check if it's a part of already damaged enemies. If it is already damaged, we're not gonna do anything. We're not gonna make create do more damage. But if it's not in the already damaged enemies, if it's not in the already damaged enemies, we're gonna do uh, damage to the AI. So that's what this is, I realize. So this is my damage function. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the specific damage function. Hopefully you have that set already. So basically what we do is we apply damage. After we apply damage, we remove this one. We remove the AI from the enemies to hit array. So it's it's the one, the array that we added to previously. And we remove it from enemies to hit because it's already been hit, so it's not gonna be an enemies to hit. And then we add it to already damaged because it's already damaged at this point. We created the damage, we made, made the damage. And then we check, are there more AI in this enemies to hit? Uh, array. We remove this one if there's more in the array. So if it's zero that means if it's greater than zero it means there are still enemies that has overlapped the going to hit. We are gonna set the next AI to the homing target. And I will I will come to this part so so just hold off on this one in, in a little bit. Uh, so let's let's go to that part. How does a homing projectile work? Well, you have this homing projectile. If you have, if it's a homing projectile, it's gonna automatically go towards its current homing target. So that's what we use. So if the projectile has its homing projectile, that's just a check that I use because not all of the projectiles are gonna be homing, like an arrow. No, oh, sorry, tired, late night list last night. So the first thing we do when we create this uh, mm, shield is uh, we make a pretty big sphere trace. Uh, it's using the scene root. So yeah, just look at this, pause the video and look at this and create exactly the same but it's just a trace from the root component, straightforward, 2000. So this is obviously the range you want your project your, your, to check, basically. So, you can see. It didn't overlap with anything, so it's just gonna return, but if it overlaps, it's gonna set that, um, that AI as the first homing point. So it's for objects. Uh, it checks for pawns. If we hit something, for all of the AI we hit, yeah, you, I guess this is unnecessary. We did a multi sphere trace. I guess you could just do a regular sphere trace and do this once. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it now because I already got it set up. Uh, because we do a do once here anyway, so 
it really doesn't make any sense. I could probably just, yeah, the for each loop is probably pretty unnecessary. I guess. Yeah, turns out it is. So yeah, you don't need that for each loop. Ah, maybe you do actually. No, you don't. No, nope. uh, no for each loop. Uh, cast to the master AI, and then we just set it that AI as the homing target. It needs to be a component. I just happen to in my AI have a camera shake source, so I'm using that one. You can just get the mesh, I guess. That's gonna work fine. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, so you can just get the mesh. Um, perfect. And if it fails, cast to the master AI. If we don't overlap with a master AI, we're just gonna return. And the delay here is like how f how long time it's gonna go, so, how long it's gonna keep going without hitting something before it returns. So that's 10 seconds. So that's gonna travel for quite a while. In 10 seconds, he's gonna return. So yeah, I probably shouldn't be standing here for 10. Let's see if it comes back in 10 seconds. I'm just gonna get some coffee while the shield returns. He didn't come back. Mm, why not? That's weird. Uh, one, two. Okay. Maybe it did work. Just that he, since it's ten seconds, actually, it's, it's probably he would have come back. It's just gonna take a while because it's gonna do. It's gonna keep going for ten seconds, and then obviously it needs ten seconds to come back again. Uh, so yeah, uh, so that's why. Anyway, you get it. Um, and then we set the return, so that means it's just gonna, yeah, it's just gonna come back. Or actually, how does that work? So. Okay, yeah, true. So if we don't overlap anything with the trace, he is gonna return after 10 seconds, yeah, after this time. And this variable is set so, so that when it's on the way back, it can't overlap stuff. Perfect. So you have this, I explained this projectile homing target. So what we do again in the uh, last part is if enemies to hit is greater than zero, Uh, now we're just gonna get, yeah. So if enemies great enemies to hit is greater than zero, we are just gonna set the zero. Uh, we're gonna get the zero. Uh, we're gonna get the first item in the array, and we're gonna yeah could just get the mesh once again. I got the camera shake source, and set that to be human target. If it's false. If this array is empty, there are no more enemies to hit, we will return. So then we set ourselves as homing targets. The owning player. So that means we're gonna go back. You could once again just get the mesh. I'm not sure why I get, got the camera boom. Mesh is probably better. I might, yeah, that was a long time ago. I'm not sure if I had a reason for that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's actually not as complicated as it looks. Uh, Unreal has most of this stuff built in. Uh, so yeah, also the last part is obviously, uh, if, we, if the damage collision collides with, not with a master AI, but if it's on the way back, if the return bull is true, and we collide, the damage collision collides with the player character, and that player character is the owning player, it's equal to the owning player, 
if it does, we're gonna destroy the actor, the projectile actor, and we're gonna get the offhand match, which is the shield, and we're gonna turn the visibility back on that one. And if we're not already playing an animation, like if we're not in the middle of a dodge roll or in the middle of another attack, we're gonna play this, which is my catch animation. So. Yeah, that looks shitty. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's just a place to hold it. That's pretty much it. Not, not got more, much more than that. Um, pom, 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 pom. Yeah, let me just check. Uh, one more thing, I guess, when you throw the... Uh, so when we do the shield throw, we do this server spawn active function class. Uh, the transform is, I just have an arrow as a component of my player, as the transfer for where to spawn the projectile. I use it for a lot of stuff, I just like arrows. And when we do the skill throw, we're gonna set the offhand mesh to uh, no, yeah, to be hidden, so that the shield in the hand disappears. That's pretty much it. I uh, hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little bit sad that I missed the animations of the uh, project, so I'm gonna try to get it working. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, one thing I see now why I didn't use the mesh, because the mesh is gonna be uh, returning to the feet, so that's why. Um, so you should probably end your projectile. Uh, Get world location. Uh, no, actually, we can't do that because it's a turn. Okay, so that's why I, I used the camera shake source because the camera shake source is in the middle. You could, could you get? Yeah. So you need actually need a target, and the target is the camera shake source in this point. You could just do a mesh or whatever. In my AI, I got a lot of stuff set up. You could probably, you can see this is the camera shake source. So it's gonna go towards that point. You could do it a little bit higher if you want to. I guess you could just add a arrow here as well. Tar target or whatever, yeah. There's plenty of ways to do this. Add something that you can target. That's about it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or there's anything you're wondering about. That's about this for this one. And yeah, I'm gonna keep focusing on the third person action tutorial series, but let me know if you have any other requests and I'll consider it. Okay, thanks, bye. See you in the next one. Also, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe.